Hello and welcome to the FF14 subreddit's Shadowbringers Healer Preview. This video will be an in-depth look on all of the new healer actions as well as changes to existing actions. Please be aware that all information in this video is based on an in-development build of Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers, and content in the final version is subject to change. During the live letter, Yoshida stated that healers are going to be rebalanced to emphasize a pure healing role. However, all this really means is that their primary goal was to improve each healer's toolkit and address their weaknesses. DPS actions still exist, and new ones have even been added, but on the other hand, several were removed as well. Also, please note that due to the battle calculations being changed for Shadowbringers, potency values in this video should be taken with a grain of salt, because they aren't going to represent the same values as they would now. Before getting into the new actions and changes, first let me go over some key system changes that will directly impact healers. If you already know the battle system changes from the live letter, feel free to skip this part. Timestamps will be in the video description. First off, MP is now capped to 10,000, and spell costs have been scaled accordingly. However, piety still exists, and affects healer roles by increasing the rate at which you regenerate MP. Next, the HP values of barrier shielding will now be displayed in the party list, which is an incredibly welcome quality of life improvement. Now you'll be able to better visualize your party's effective HP. Now, let's take a look at healer role actions in Shadowbringers. Role actions are no longer customizable and are unlocked regularly as you level up. One thing you may notice is that Protect has been removed, so you'll never need to go through the motions of applying that before battle again. Fortunately for our hotbars, healers now only have 6 role actions, Repose, Asuna, Swift Cast, Lucid Dreaming, Sure Cast, and Rescue. Removed are Clear Stance, Break, Protect, Eye for an Eye, and Large S. Repose has been moved over from the White Mage Kit and has not changed in function. Lucid Dreaming's recast time has been cut in half. But on the other hand, Surecast's recast time has been increased from 30 seconds to a whopping 120 seconds, so you'll unfortunately have to be a lot more selective about when you use it. The duration has been increased slightly by 1 second. Asuna, Swiftcast, and Rescue see no changes aside from the level that the first two are learned at. One notable change to White Mage is that Lilies now accumulate over time, rather than relying on Tier 1 and Tier 2 casts. There's also a new blood dueling mechanic, which will be discussed shortly, and they've also received two new instant cast GCD heals to help out with healing on the go, since White Mage has more cast times than the other healers. First, let's get into the new Lily system, since I'm sure that's what you're the most curious about. Lilies now accumulate automatically every 30 seconds of combat, up to a maximum of 3. There's no other way to obtain them, and their effect has also been completely changed. Now, the only way you consume Lilies is by using two new spells. The first one is a level 52 spell called Aflatus Solace, which is an instant cast 700 potency heal. The second one is a level 76 spell called Aflatus Rapture, which is an instant cast 300 potency AoE heal. Both of these spells are on the GCD and cost 1 Lily. The Blood Lily is a new addition to the drop gauge, unlocked at level 74 with the Heart of Solace trait. It blooms after consuming 3 Lilies, allowing you to use Aflatus Misery, a powerful AoE attack with a base potency of 900 and a diminishing returns effect on each additional enemy. Again, please remember that damage calculations have changed, so any exact potency comparisons to existing skills will probably not be accurate. As for other new actions, at level 72, White Mage gains two new spells, Dia, which replaces Arrow 2, and Glare, which replaces Stone 4. Both of these are direct improvements over their predecessors. Please note that Arrow 3 has been removed, so Dia will be your only dot now. At level 78, you gain the Enhanced Asylum trait, which gives Asylum an additional effect that's like a mini largesse, increasing HP recovery via healing actions by 10%, but only on party members that are inside the bubble. Finally, the level 80 action is called Temperance, which increases your healing magic potency by 20%, while also reducing damage taken by 10% for all party members within 30 yams. It lasts 20 seconds and can be used every 2 minutes. It's definitely ideal for handling heavy raid-wide damage. As for changes to existing actions, Confession stacks via AoE heals are no longer a thing. Instead, Plenary Indulgence has changed to nature to an AoE buff that triggers an additional 200 potency heal when you use Medica, Medica 2, or Cure 3. Note that this buff only lasts 10 seconds, and the radius has been reduced to 20 yams. Regen's potency has been increased by 50, while its duration has decreased by 3 seconds, or 1 tick. Overall, this is a 150 potency increase, assuming the entire hot is used. Again, the potency comparisons in this video are solely for reference and do not reflect on changes to battle calculations. Moving on, Medica 2's hot potency has been doubled and its duration halved. 
This means it still does the same amount of healing, but in half the time. Divine Venison's description has changed. The shield is now worth 500 potency rather than 15% of the target's maximum HP. As for DPS actions, Arrow 2, Stone 3, and Stone 4 have received some buffs, not that you'll be using any of these in max level content, and as previously mentioned, Arrow 3 has been removed in its entirety. For the curious, the replacement level 58 action is Thin Air, which is previously level 62, so you'll be able to use Thin Air in level 60 synced content. Holy now deals a flat 140 potency to all nearby enemies instead of a scaling system starting from 200. Using current calculations, this would be a nerf for 7 enemies and below, and a buff at 8 enemies and up. As a minor note, Fluid Aura's knockback effect has been removed, and now it is solely a bind and can be used from afar. Traits-wise, all of the enhanced mind traits have been removed, but this isn't an issue because they only account for 48 mind. Secret of the Lily 2 is gone too, because of the change in Lily functionality. Overall, White Mage's kit got rounded out with some new instant cast heals and healing buffs. The new Lily system is definitely an improvement and even contributes to DPS now, although it takes 90 seconds worth of lilies to cast a Flatus Misery. Next up is Scholar. Scholars are affected by the change to pet actions, and so fairy actions will now be categorized as character actions. Commands such as place and heal are the same as before, but obey has been removed since you'll be controlling all of your fairy's abilities manually by default. Your fairies are also immune to damage now, so you won't have to worry about them dying mid-fight. Also, Aeos and Selene are now effectively the exact same thing, just different skins, so you can choose based on which appearance you like more. In return, Scholar gets a new temporary summon named Seraph and more healing output. Before I get into anything, let's take a quick look at the actions menu. What immediately stands out is that the majority of the class actions have been moved to the job category. Scholar does in fact have different versions of some of these actions than Summoner. I'm not going to go into the details of these differences because they're mainly potency differences, but it's interesting to note that the devs are trying to split the two further. Seraph is the main new mechanic for Scholar, a new summon. You unlock her at level 80, and she can be summoned for 20 seconds on a 1 20 second recast timer, replacing your current fairy. While Seraph is summoned, fairy actions are changed as follows. Whispering Dawn becomes Angel's Whisper, and Fey Illumination becomes Seraphic Illumination. However, these two are purely aesthetic changes. Fey Illumination has actually been changed a bit, but I'll get into that later when I talk about existing fairy skills. Seraph comes with two new abilities. One of them is Seraphic Veil a 200 potency heal and shield on a 3 second recast timer. In other words, this is Sarah's version of Embrace. The other new ability is Consolation, an AoE 150 potency heal and shield, which you command her to do. Consolation can be charged up to 2 uses with a charge time of 20 seconds. Since Seraph can only be summoned every 120 seconds, you'll always be able to use Consolation twice per summon. As for other new actions, Scholar has a new level 46 action called Art of War, which is a basic 150 potency AoE attack intended to replace Miasma 2. At level 72, Biolysis replaces Bio 2, and Broil 3 replaces Broil 2. At level 74, you get a new ability called Recitation, which allows you to use Eloquium, Sucker, Indomitability, or Excogitation for free, with guaranteed crit. At level 76, you get a new fairy ability called Fey Blessing, which is a flat AoE heal with 250 potency and a cooldown of 1 minute. Lastly, at level 78, you get the Enhanced Sacred Soil trait, which adds a 100 potency regen effect to Sacred Soil, making it similar to Astrologian's Bubble. As for changes to existing actions, let's get the bad news out of the way first. Scholar no longer has access to Miasma, Miasma 2, Shadow Flare, Energy Drain, Bane, Rouse, and Fey Covenant. I'll let that sink in for a second. Anyway, Aetherflow is now unlocked at level 45, and cannot be used outside of combat. Since Energy Drain and Bane are gone, Aetherflow stacks can now only be used on Lustrate, Sacred Soil, Indom, and Excog. Speaking of which, Excog can now be used on yourself. Adloquium has actually been buffed. Now, Galvanize is 125% of the amount healed by default, and in the event of a crit, you get an extra 100% on top of that. The crit bonus is now a separate shield buff called Catalyze. Sucker has had its potency buffed by 30, but its shielding has been nerfed from 150% to 125%. Emergency Tactics recast time has been reduced by 5 seconds, and since Eye for an Eye no longer exists, Deployment Tactics only spreads Galvanize now. Dissipation now automatically resummons your fairy when its effect ends. Unfortunately, Chain Stratagem has been nerfed from 15% to 10%. As mentioned before, Aeos and Selene now function the same. 
Their summon cast time has been reduced to a regular GCG, and the MP cost seems cheaper, even with the new scaling. Embrace has been nerfed by 100 potency, making it weaker than a white mage's regen tick, but on the other hand, it's also instant cast now. You also can't assign it to a hotbar or macroid anymore. Fey Illumination now reduces magic damage taken by 5% in addition to its healing buff, but since Fey Covenant was removed, this feels like a heavy nerf. Fey Union was also nerfed by 80 potency. Ruin 2 gets buffed from 100 to 200 potency through traits, making it even better for weaving. As a minor note, Bio 2, Broil, and Broil 2 receive potency buffs. Also, Sustain has been removed, which is to be expected now that fairies don't take damage anymore. As for other traits, again, all Enhanced Intelligence and Enhanced Mind traits have been removed. The Aether Dam traits have also been removed since you don't get Aether Flow until level 45 now, and it already starts at 3 stacks. With Shadow Flare, Miasma, Energy Drain, and Bane gone, it feels like Scholar has lost a lot of its DPS kit, and the Chain Strat nerf really doesn't help either. Seraph is looking very strong, but since she can only be up a sixth of the time, I'll leave it up to the Theory Crafters to figure out how it all balances out. It'll also be interesting to see if Recitation's guaranteed spread crit lows end up being overpowered. Moving on to our last healer, Astrologian. Astrologian gets a major card rework and some new abilities that let you make use of the opposite stances effects. First, the cards themselves have all been changed. All of them increase damage dealt now, and they're differentiated by the seals they give and whether they're better used on melee or ranged DPS. The seals are used for a new level 50 ability, Divination. How this works is that you get a new job gauge called Seals of Arcana that fills as you play cards. Once you've played at least 3 cards, you can use Divination to buff your party's DPS. The strength of the buff depends on how many different seals you have. However, Divination is on a 3 minute cooldown, so you're not going to be using it every 3 cards. Mechanics-wise, first of all, draw has been split into two actions, draw and play, with separate recast timers, meaning that you don't have to rush to use a card ASAP just to get the draw cooldown rolling again. This is great from an efficiency standpoint, but unfortunately I think it does mean that you'll need separate hotkeys for them. Next, Royal Road and Spread have been removed. Also, redraw can now store up to 3 charges, which should alleviate the RNG struggles quite a bit. With Royal Road and Spread gone, it only makes sense for Sleeve Draw to be changed too. And now what it does is reset the draw timer and give you 2 stacks of a buff that reduces draw's cooldown to 3 seconds, essentially giving you 3 faster draws. Its recast has been increased from 2 minutes to 3 minutes. Minor Arcana has been shifted down to level 50, and the effect is no longer randomized. If your drawn card is Balance, Arrow, or Spear, then it gives you Lord of Crowns, and if it's Bowl, Ewer, or Spire, then it gives you Lady of Crowns. The minor arcana themselves have also been changed, and are powered up versions of their respective origin cards. The catch is that they don't give seals, so it's still better to prioritize divination which buffs the entire party. Overall, card management is going to revolve around manipulating the cards you play to get different seals for divination and using minor arcana on the leftovers. As for other new actions, at level 72, Combust 2 is replaced by Combust 3, which has the exact same potency and duration but a lower MP cost. I'm not sure if this is a tooltip mistake, but it seems very underwhelming, especially when it's a 30 second dot. Anyway, at the same time, Malefic 3 is replaced by Malefic 4, which actually is 30 potency higher. The level 74 ability is Celestial Intersection, which is basically a Spected Benefic, except it does the reverse effect of your sect. If you're in Diurnal, then it gives a shield, and if you're in Nocturnal, then it gives a regen. The ability, however, is fairly weak, and it can only be used every 30 seconds. At level 76, you unlock Horoscope, which seems to be a prepared AoE heal like Earthly Star, except it gets strengthened by casting Helios or Aspected Helios. At level 78, you gain the Enhanced Essential Dignity trait, which allows you to stack ED to two charges, giving you more flexibility as to how and when to use it. Finally, Astrologian's level 80 ability is Neutral Sect, which increases healing by 20% and gives you the effects of both sects for 20 seconds. This means that Aspected Helios and Aspected Benefic will give both a shield and a regen. Now for changes to existing actions. First off, Time Dilation has been removed. Celestial Opposition is now an AoE heal, not a stun, and it doesn't extend buff durations either. Its initial heal is 100 potency, and it has an additional regen or shield depending on your sect. Basically, it's a mini Aspected Helios. Both of these changes mean that there will be no more extending of buff durations, including cards. Diurnal Sect and Nocturnal Sect no longer have their 10% and 15% healing buffs or enmity reductions, and Nocturnal Sect now increases the MP cost of Aspected Benefic. Earthly Star's damage has been nerfed by 50 potency, but the healing remains unchanged. 
to balance out the removed healing buffs from stances, Helios receives a small buff, while Aspected Helios has its base heal halved and its regen buffed by 60 potency. Benefic 2 and Diurnal Aspected Benefic are also buffed. Aspected Benefic and Aspected Helios now require an active sex to use, so you'll notice a lot faster if you forgot to turn one on. Sinistry's recast time has increased by 30 seconds, and Collective Unconscious's regen effect has been nerfed by 100 potency. Gravity has been shifted down to level 45, so you can use it in level 50 synced content. Similar to what happened to Holy, it now deals a flat 130 potency to targets affected, which is a nerf at 10 enemies and below. Traits-wise, you're probably tired of hearing this, but the enhanced mind traits are gone. Most of Astrologian's changes were in the card system. Getting maximum potential out of Divination will still require luck, but overall the RNG seems to be lessened by the redraw buff. Instead of memorizing Royal Road patterns, now you'll have to memorize which cards give which seals, as well as which ones to use on melee versus ranged. Overall, we can see that the focus has indeed been on shoring up each healer's healing toolkit. White Mage got its much needed Lily rework, Scholar got better direct healing output, and Astrologian no longer has unwanted cards. For White Mages and especially Scholars who enjoy DPSing, the DPS changes are kind of disappointing because all healers only have one dot and one regular attack now. Feel free to discuss what you think of the new abilities and changes in the comments on our Reddit thread.